As I walked on through Chatham Street, a fair maid I did meet. She asked me to see her home, she looked and bleak, her straight to me away. Santi, my dear Annie, oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka? The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan and Johnny Kennedy. In this podcast, we talk to former Kerry County Board Chairman and current Dr. Cloaks Chairman, Pat DeBag O'Sullivan. Pat was born and raised in Sunnyside, Queens, and has a unique perspective on the development of Gaelic games in New York, or in his view, the lack thereof. He shares his thoughts on what improvements are needed, as well as the predicament that is Gaelic Park. Keep up to date with all of our latest episodes by subscribing to the podcast, and we appreciate all feedback, so please give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Known in GAA circles as The Bag, the first question we asked Pat was, where did he get the name Pat The Bag? I suppose when I was younger, I was always above a carry football training, and that time... Um, there was no sponsorship happening around at the time and um, Kerry were always getting gear from Adidas and my father was a selector and I was playing on the ridge with the Krogs my father got an, an Adidas bag and it was like twice the size not three times the size of the boys bag and next thing all of a sudden they, they got, began calling me the bag and next thing it became pet the bag then after <laughs> that's so, brilliant so I, th- yeah. I, I, I thought it was linked to your um your financial um, fundraising over in, uh, in in New York stateside for for Kerry down through the years. So I know it was, it was well there when I was about fourteen or fifteen. This when when I came. So New York was only a dream that time about coming over, raising money even, and being or being being involved with Kerry at the time. So it's like everything when we moved home from America in nineteen seventy five, and prior to coming home in seventy five. My father was involved in the J here in New York, and um, himself and John Kerry O'Donnell had a falling out in 1970. Like I suppose, nine times out of ten, there's be always arguments after matches. But where we were living in Queens, um, we were living in um, Sunnyside, just off Skidman Avenue, and um, all all the people living in that area were Cavan, Mayo, Kerry. That was the the, the big makeup of the the population. And with all those fellas there, there was, there was great footballers from different counties there. And they basically wanted to set up like a, a Queen's team. They, they were, some were playing with Kevin, some were playing with, New York, with Kerry, some were playing. But they were all socializing together and working together and living together in that area in, in, in Sunnyside. And um, what happened after was um, they farmed. They were farming a club called the Shannon... The Shannon um, Shannon Rangers, because um, they reckon the Shannon um, River touched all, every county going up from Limerick all the way up, and um, when they lodged the team, they were refused, and they had to take the Carlow team, the Carlow name, <laughs> so they became the New York Carlow team, and they, they won the championship in 71 and 73, I think, but it, uh, the fellas playing with them like that, they had Mikey Sheehy played with them, Mickey Neto Sullivan, um, Paddy O'Shea, I mean, there was um, Down footballers, Kevin footballers, me all, me all O'Shea. They were all, they were there, and there was, there was past past county players living there. Like, but the big thing was that um, they were all GA fellas, and they went away and they farmed, and some fellas moved back to America, and all the fellas uh, moved back to Ireland. Other people stayed here, and and the Carlo team basically died, and they went back to their county teams after a while, but. Gaelic Park was a special place every Sunday and for, um, for fellas co- going up to um, watch the matches and meet fellas on, the, on a weekly basis. But I suppose it's a long road from Petterbeg to, to, to Queens and sun, in, in Sunnyside. But you're being a bit modest as regards the fundraising that you have done in New York. You would have been, I don't mind saying, you were probably the main man behind it originally, certainly in the last... 15 years anyway coming to New York with your connections here would that be right? And uh, what really happened and how like everybody has enough money it's only when they need something special to be built you need extra money and you can only, and when Sean Walsh was chairman of the Kerry County Board 
I was development officer. And Sean was at his wit's end trying to find a pitch for Kerry to train in during the winter. And any, f- any club with Roger Salt who have done up their grounds didn't want to give it out to the Kerry County Board to make sure of it, sorry, um, during the winter months, like, and next thing then try to repair it then for the summer for their own games. So it was finding it harder and harder to get um, venues to train. Like, we trained in Limerick, we trained in Cork. This is the Kerry Senior football team. And um, so Sean drove the centre of excellence that we were looking for, and and we nearly had it over the line um, over in Tralee with a new stadium in Austin Stag Park. And um, the, old, the old racetrack was where the new um, training ground was going to be. But like everything, the recession came and everything went off the table. And we were still had no training ground. Sean went on to Munster Council and um, we, had, we had nowhere to go. And Jerome Conway came in as chairman. And Jerome was another very good chairman. And what happened was the builder who we were dealing with was after buying a parcel of land in, in Corrins. And through Jerome's chairmanship, we had money saved up for um, and, um, with money. Actually, when Jerome became chairman, he set up a, a committee with Carly Kiri and under the chairmanship of Shawnee Walsh. And basically, we, got, we gathered several hundred thousand euros and we put it in a rainy day fund for the chance I'm purchasing uh, a training ground for Kerry and when so we bought the land of um, this developer John Casey and um, we got a very good deal on it and I think it was around 650 or 750 now and it was like 42 acres and maybe and right in the middle of Kerry and t- like it was like 10 or 12 years searching for the ground where we were so close on getting um, the racetrack in Chile, which fell apart, and next thing we had nowhere to go. This came up, we purchased it, and next thing we began um, getting plans made of the ground, and we figured out oh, we could get four or five, pi- we could get five pitches in it, car parking, and a building. So next thing we began totaling up the prices on what this would cost, and the money was gone into several million. I think it was like the first phase of this was like about five and a half million. And, um, and and a part of this at the time was just outside we, um, a part of this development was supposed to include a medical centre and all that for the players going forward but then the, the Trilly IT came on board and offered us um, um, into their medical si- um, that were developing through the Trilly IT the, um, I suppose the physiotherapist um, you know for people with special the sports um, clinic they were putting in place and so there was an extra cost of like an, close to 1.1 million then had to be raised so we were, all of a sudden we were at five and a half and we were at six six and overall then it came in roughly around seven and a half million not finished so time to fly to america so we <coughs> we met i was chairman at this stage you now after jerome and um we met with pro park and we, we met with kerry group we met different people and so um, what what year are we talking about what, roughly well, the purchase would have been done in probably 10 years ago, maybe 10, 11 years ago. And the commencement began seven years ago on, on, on the development of, of the grounds. And so, first of all, we said, um, whatever happens, we have to figure out where we're going to try to get money. So we went to Kerry Group. Kerry Group were always great supporters of Kerry J and they were going to support uh, the project and they donated a million euros so there was a commitment that came after by Croke Park of another million and so all of a sudden we had to raise five maybe five and a half million was the target and we were scratching our head things were very bad at home immigration was rife in Kerry every, every Sunday Monday morning people were flying back to London people were after heading off young younger generation we have to go into Australia things was there was a big struggle in Kerry to be honest about it and every day of the week clubs were struggling with numbers and there was no hope for to get this off the ground we had a big ball of land and we had no money except two donations when we we're ready to de- make the development and we we're scratching our head and we said how will we come about this and 
we basically formed an international fundraising committee and we got all the past players back Im- involved and they all had massive connections because in their youth people have immigrated and they did very well all over the world uh, of that generation and we basically um, said we'd come over, three or four of us, to have a look to see, to explore, to see if we get money in New York. And the person who we put all our hopes on, and he just passed away there last week, was Dennis Kennedy of Wall Street Access. Dennis was a past pupil of St. Brendan's College. He was after bringing over so many younger Kerry people working for him. He gave so much to, um, to different um, charities here in New York. He gave so much to different charities at home in Ireland. And we said, no, he would be our man. And um, we went around asking, and, and to be honest, um, everything was like, was, everything is about timing. So we went in, we met with his, his son, Sean, and we met with Dennis. Um, Bomber Liston was in there. Um, we had um, Ogie Morin. We had um, Dar O'Shea, myself, and, and we went, and and Mike Larkin and John DeWire. They were, they were the people that were on the initial party that, that um, were doing the, um, the sourcing. And what happened was Dermy Foley, who used to work with us at home in the pub, told me, when you're in New York, make sure you call the J.T. Megan of Wall Street, uh, of um, Morris Reagan of J.T. Megan's. And the other person we were looking at then was Donald Sullivan of Navalis. Yeah. Alex. Uh, yeah, so, so we were coming over anyway. We had our first two people were um, Wall Street Axis and Avalis. They were the two people we were hoping. And then Johnny Riney had a function for us in Rosie O'Grady's upstairs where he got it out um, for the for Kerry people to come and to hear what was going on. So in we went, Wall Street Axis. We shot out. We, we got no joy there anyway in Wall Street Axis. And it was a bit of a surprise because Tony O'Keefe and myself were there about seven or eight years before that, saying about this project was going to begin, and it didn't happen. And look, fair enough, it, you move on. So we went on to Donald Sullivan. He was very good to us now, to be honest. And um, he was more than helpful, and he helped out as best he, what, he, what he could do. And then we went into Morris Regan, and Morris Regan lifted the whole... Um, I suppose the whole project to a new level. Yeah. Basically, he he, he was willing to help out. Um, he's the store man, um, Morris, and um, and when we got going and talking about the development and the whole lot, he said he'd do a dinner the following year, and from then he did a bigger dinner. He sold out the Plaza Hotel for us, and wow. and after that, then we never looked back and like two point something million dollars we pulled out in New York in, in, in four years and it was it was a huge amount of money but with that he gave us the scope to get on to go to London where we took another quarter of a million sterling out of it and then we took uh, another hundred thousand out of, uh, just shy of a hundred thousand in Dublin and all of a sudden that's what we generated and so we had good times in doing it but it was I'll be honest, without the help of the people here in New York, we would never have got off the ground, day one, but especially without the help of Morris Regan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Morris has been um, he's a big supporter of Crokes as well. Dr. Crokes is New York sponsor there a little bit. Or he is, like, yeah. I suppose. When I, I, w- I was at home, and the boy, I was after having an operation on my leg, and um, the, the sponsors at home were changing, and um, so the boys asked me, um, would I sponsor it? And I said, <laughs> I, I'll help out, like, but for the money they were looking. But um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't it really been easier for me to sponsor it at the end. And but um, no, but Morris, I asked Morris, and he said no problem. And in fairness, we had three great years. We went to two All Ireland Club Finals. We won three county championships, and we got beaten in the county final this year. We, um, we've been at the top there at, at Omi Kerry for the last ten years. I mean, eight county finals we've been in in, in ten years. So we. Uh, it, Look, we enjoyed it. We had good days and bad days. Were you involved in the development of um, Dr. Croke's uh, facility there as well? Um, I, was chair- I was chairman of the Croke's when I was um, development officer 
for Kerry and we started off there. I think we spent 1.4 million. I mean, so we did a lot of work with I'm back chairman now again now and um, we spent something like 350,000 last two years now. We have another another couple hundred thousand to spend and that will, cu- that will get us in a position where we're able to finish the facilities what we're doing and we're hoping to get a third pitch after that. Okay. So we'll be doing our best anyway. <laughs> 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 your parents are both, uh, your parents met here in New York huh? or did they in Sunnyside? Or my, my father and mother met in New York. My mother was living in Sunnyside. My father was living in Sunnyside. Um, um, they just both immigrated. Um, my father was here in, I think, 1959, and my, my mother came after maybe 1960. I mean, 58. I'm not even sure about the dates. And like I said, Kerry Mayo, yeah, were, I mean, <laughs> Cavan. They were the they were the big people living in that area at the time. Mm-hmm. They met up. They married and. And, uh, and you've siblings still living here. You have a lot of family connections. Oh I've, yeah, I've, I've met some of them here over the last few years, which they've, I've they've I've all done very well for themselves in law enforcement, everything, all the way through. It's been yeah. My cousin John was um, head of the FBI here in New York. It was he was just retired. there six months younger than I am. Like, but I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I met him last year. He's pretty young to be retiring, but yeah. it's not like he's retired and gone playing golf. He's still he's active still in his own business. That's he good. Is, he's good guy, John. I have a lot of good cousins here. Like. So, so you're uh, a golden <laughs> golden ticket recipient. I, I'm sure we have when he <laughs> says that that for us immigrants over here the golden ticket is the uh, the American passport with the Irish passport. I have the two of them. <laughs> the two of them. Yeah. I have the two of them. You don't use one going home and use the other coming back as always to, to jump the queue. That's <laughs> basically it. So yeah. h- how long were you? So you were born and bred in Sunnyside, Pat. Yeah. And what? Wha- uh, how long did you live there before you moved back? Back to Ireland. I was eight years of age. We, we were um, St. Sebastian School. I went to like and made my holy communion over here. My father owned a bar with a friend of him, of his, Jim McGovern, who was from Cavan. And um, he was a builder. My father was a regional manager with A&P. And um, they had the pub as well. And they, they did well out of, out of it. And look, I'll be honest about it. It's living here in New York now and living like in the 70s are two different time warps. I remember being here in, 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 in the late 80s and we were in the Bliss Bar in, over in off, off, uh, Green Point Avenue there and 20 fellas listening to a phone plugged into a speaker to listen to the Kerry Monin match and now you can look on the phone you can be talking to the person at home. I mean people were depending on mail, they were depending on money to be sent home in the mail to parents, now there's wire transfer, there's like whatever's on television at home now you can watch here whatever radio stations on at home that time it was different it was people left in and go home for years and I mean people were here eight nine ten years I mean it was so expensive to fly flying always cheap it's it's a different world here and, and the biggest problem what I find is that the amount of genuine Irish people that are here and can't go home and living on, on, on a knock on the door is, oh is yeah. horrendous like because they've given so much to the communities over here and it's just like I said I've, I've got the golden ticket and they love to have that golden ticket and, Absolutely. and it's hard it's hard for them like so you went you went back when you were about eight so and did your, fa- your father set up the bar uh, yeah my father actually um my uncle was alive and my mother always wanted to go home and my father had no interest in going home. And um, my father, they went to a dinner dance in the, the Tower, Tower View ballroom down in um, Woodside. Woodside yeah. Yeah. Tower View, uh, wasn't it? Tower View, yeah, yeah. Tower View. And um, whatever dance was on anyway, um, that time, like I was saying, phones, like my, my grandfather or my uncles, they had no phones at home they had to go to a telephone box they had a ring and my father had to ring them back on a certain day but Sunday evening or you know, whatever <laughs> it was but um, my father anyway came home anyway one morning anyway after one of these all night or um, dinner dinner parties and that went on from one establishment to another like and um, my uncle ranks and he um, 
after getting a place from in Killarney, my father said, buy it. And two or three weeks later, anyway, my uncle rang again. He said, where's the money? The deposit for this. My father said, for what? He said, um, you're after buying this establishment. And um, we went home then. That's, um, that was in October, uh, maybe early November. And my father's first cousin, Amy O'Sullivan, who was secretary of the county board in, in Kerry, he was getting married. So my father and myself went there, and my father went to see what he was buying. And that's how the Tatler Jack came about then. It opened in August 1975. So that's... Tatler Jackson, in case people don't know, Tatler Jackson, Main Street, Clarny, which is... Plunkett uh, Street, Plunkett Plunk Street. Plunk Street. <laughs> 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 so, so, and the, so are Tatlers are the same, same, are they still the main sponsor of um, Dr. Cokes? Oh, JT Megan. JT Megan, JT, Megan, no? JT ah. Megan is the main sponsor and we're on the back. We, we, we pulled that from the yeah. podcast. <laughs> well, but you're, you're heavily involved, so you went, you, you, you went back then, Patty, you opened the, the bar... I suppose you would have been playing yourself. Um. I was trying more than playing. <laughs> yeah. No. We texted a few ex-players there to ask them, is there any questions we can ask you? And the first thing they said, ask him about his own playing career. I don't know, Johnny. Maybe you're one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew by the way they wrote it that that was a dig. Yeah, they no. said, ask him about his own playing career. No, I was lucky enough. I, I, I came up with some very good players. like, And um, I'll be honest, when we were coming, like when the Crokes, and you look at... Um, Crooks were joined up with in the in the early seventies. Were joined up with East Kerry, and say from mid seventies or maybe the start of the eighties, they were they were playing with Killarney, which was Crooks and Legion. And we went out on our own in nineteen eighty six, and we haven't looked back since. And a lot of the fellas who I played with underage, like, were the backbone of of those teams, with a couple of the older players and. We, we drove on and they, a lot of them in fairness they won an All-Ireland club in 92 and they were the backbone they, they, they changed the thinking within the club and a brother-in-law of mine Pat O'Shea and I'd be honest I give him a lot of credit for what he has done for the Crokes and he, the one thing he always wanted to figure out was why were Nemo so good and he spoke and spoke and watched and watched and he tried to implement what Nemo Rangers did into the Crokes and and that kind of a mentality that went with it. And I give Pat O'Shea a lot of credit for what he's done um, for the club. I mean, he's, he, he brought the club to a new new height, a new generation. And But he's only one man, but there were so many different coaches that have helped these players coming on. Like, and because we had a golden generation for the last 10 years, the club has it. What year, Pat, did you become the chairman um, with Kerry? Like you had a great golden generation then, as you said, from Crokes, but definitely into the uh, into the Kerry setup. You had some fabulous years with them. I, I got involved. I got elected with Kerry. I was 29 years of age. Wow. I was one of the youngest officers ever elected in Kerry, and I spent 19 years in office. Wow. So I'm gone three years. So we go back three years and then take 19 off it. So it's yeah. um, 16. It was 97, 98. Eight, that time. 87. Um, Kerry beat Mayo. Convention was on that Christmas, right. and I got elected in. And my next birthday was 30 in, in February, so it was before Christmas. It was 87 when Kerry beat me. Yeah, but I'd be honest. Um, it was by chance I ever got uh, involved. I, I know, probably, um, interest in being involved as an officer. But I was training the Crokes under 16 team and minor team, but the under 16 team went under in the county final. And we were waiting for for the final to be fixed, and it was four or five weeks we were out. And so we used to play St. Brendan's College. We had about eight on the starting St. Brendan's team, and we probably had our first 15. We had uh, most of them were on the panel. So we used to play St. Brendan's Froome Cup team, which was 16 and a half, every once one for about four weeks. They were waiting for the college's final. We were waiting for our final. And so we played, like I said, Every every Friday for about five weeks, and Sean Kelly and Father Larry Kelly was there, and Father Kennelly. And um, I was leaving one day, and Sean Kelly was chairperson, and he um, said to me, he says, um, "I have a job for you." And I said, "What job is that?" He says, um, "I need you to make a few bob for us." And I said, "What are we going to do now, Sean?" He says, um, "Will you do anything for me? Would you come to a meeting?" And so I went over to Tralee in '87. And um, I met Sean and Tony O'Keefe, 
and he said what can we do I said the easiest way I think you can make money at the moment in the county hasn't done it is a golf classic and Eamon O'Sullivan who was above in Bishopstown who his father played with the Crooks he played Kerry Minor so he played with the Crooks he was in charge of Heineken uh, he was the rep at the time he became the the the, the actual um, the Heineken b- boss and um, so I got I got Eamon to sponsor it and um, Tom Prendergast was there and um, Seamus McGarrett and a couple more Pat O'Connor and we did this golf classic and we made about thirty thousand pound at the time and um, we did a kind of a small fundraising because the Kerry Cavan match was coming up straight after that and um, so we did that as well we, we made about ten grand on that and there was elections coming up and Sean Kelly said to me he said do everything about putting your name in and I put my name in and I got elected and I was I was there for nineteen years then. So Two Cork men nod their head with disappointment, as you said, you were there for 19 years, putting misery on Cork, I guess. I, 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 I want to say put mes- misery, but <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I, I had a cousin who loved to put misery on Cork, Char- <laughs> Charlie Nelligan. My grandmother was Noreen Nelligan, and um, that time, when, um, I'll be honest, Charlie was the Kerry Minor selector, I say, he came after, and um, no, like oh, he was around that time, Charlie, he... Lo- he loved the game like he was a great footballer like he was and he was I'll be honest like like he, to be a member of that great Kerry team he should have got eight all Ireland medals like he he was a s- that time they only gave out 20 all Ireland medals um, in 1975 but Charlie Nelligan won an all Ireland minor medal and he was sub goalkeeper for the Kerry senior team that day after winning a minor when it went on to win on at 21 but he got no medal in 1975 so they would change the rules after that they did when Peter O'Leary didn't get a medal in, in 2000 so the goalkeeper was automatically a member and next thing then um, of the 20 w- that went from there to 21 and then after that then went to 24 because of Mike Cassie got injured and because Kerry played six players and one of the other in, f- in the semi-finals and, that, and they were entitled to a medal mm-hmm. and Mike was told and it went to 24 after that so. Pat, when you look at the, the work you did in building the Centre of Excellence in Kerry, and you look, you six, there's six pitches there, I believe, is there? No, there's four pitches, there's room for two more. Room for two more. And, like, you got through that through recessionary times, and it's, it's a great facility now, and we in Cork, we look at what we got out of 100 million. We've got um, a new stadium that has a pitch that doesn't really meet the standards of a of a pitch like and I remember a couple of years ago when it was being built Derek Cavanaugh who was a Nemo man a former Cork player and uh, he, he was po- he pointed to a, um, he, he had a great piece in the examiner basically saying that the money should have been spent in somewhere like a centre of excellence and how that breeds a winning mentality that you you'll have you'll have Kerry teams down there now you'll have the senior team training there I presume you'll have minor teams under 16 teams all looking and they'd probably pass by the senior team and it's a great thing to feed off do you think do you think it's, it was money ill spent by Cork to invest so much in Parky Cueve and still still not have the proper resources training facilities for for the underage even though it seems to be that Cork are still producing underage players well, it, if it was you would you have you see s- first of all I mean you can look at it in different ways Parky Key was falling down so they needed a new stadium then also they have been serviced by um, UCD CIT Middleton's out the road at Mallow's there mm. they have four centres already where there's multiple pitches um, but the biggest thing what and I spoke to Niall Callan and I think Niall Callan had a had there was there was there was a green area on the on the motorway over by the Corraheen yeah yeah Corraheen and where they could have developed a new stadium probably above the water table there and could have sold the old ground and they would have other ground pieces of ground to develop but at the end of the day Perky Kivas is a fabulous stadium alright 
um, the pitch wasn't right, but they're getting that right. That'd be right. Well, well I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't knock. It's a fantastic stadium. Yeah. I'm just saying, when you have a ball of cash, that seems to be. Well, I'd be, on, I'd be honest about it. I think that the association in general has a lot more to um, to answer for. I mean, it, it's it's. If you speak to a lot of the people in the association, they'll tell you that um, as every county um, basically fends for themselves. But yet, Parky Keeve and Crow Park, and you look above in Salt Hill, they're major cities, and they need to be serviced by major stadiums. And the new stadium that's happening above in Belfast, they all have to happen. But the question I'm saying is that the and they're doing this now at the moment. The JNO are working with the with the, the government and they're developing above in Navan oh, a new stadium in Navan. They're developing a new stadium in Kildare and they're just, um, developing a new stadium in Waterford. The question is, when will they get down to Killarney? I don't know, but the association in general need facilities. And the association has to take control of the association over here in New York. And the reason why I say that is, is that from my father's time here in New um, they had the money to buy a stadium here in the late 60s and what they did in New York is they went on a world tour for two or three months and spent every bob they had and they had no stadium and next thing several chairmen have come in and tried to develop stadiums and made mistakes and all with the best of uh, intentions to do better and if you look at um, the, uh, London they have their own grounds over and it's been developed by GA people they all got together and there's two big financial areas in the world one is London one is New York and here in New York we're rudderless and the amount of money that's in this city by Americans and Irish Americans and the, the place where they should have bought was Randall's Island and they could have put three or four there and they could have done deals with the city to get um, grounds and develop them but it's a business. They were offered it, it in the 90s, but I believe. But it was, there was people on the ground here who advised not to go on it. There was people of every, uh, whatever it is, people have their own ideas in their head. But the association has to come here and take control of which direction they're going to go. Because if they, don't, if they don't do it, they're going to be going from cat to ha- hand all the time. Because the fiasco that happened above in Gaelic Park, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense. And top of the hill is uh, they were trying to develop there. That's only one part of the jigsaw. They need to get a place close to the city where people can come 15, 20 minutes and get into the grounds, go home. It can't be an ordeal to bring your kids to play Gaelic football or hurling. It has to be, it has to be common sense. It has to be, and but people are so busy in their own lives here, and I think that the GA have to take control of it. And New York is different compared to Boston, Chicago, and the whole lot. There has to be a business plan because they have no problem on, on Sky Television. They have no problem going to Australia, um, showing it on television over. They have no problem playing Aussie rules. But there's no plan to develop New York or the association as a whole here in America. And they have to do that. And America is the biggest um, market that we should be getting into. They were offered. Um, th- was it Randall's Island? They were offered a, a couple. They were of offered Island? Randall's Island in no, the nineties. No, ninety-seven. Kerry played in Randall's Island against Cavan, but there was a lease coming up in Randall's Island, and X amount of money had to be put down. And I forget who was the president at the time. Monty Maloney, I think maybe from Galway. I'm not sure. No, I'd be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be wrong. And yeah, there's been so many presidents went by because they bought land. They didn't buy land. They went too far. Monies went disappeared. They were spent on different things. And More world tours? <laughs> no, I don't know. But it, 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 it's, I'd be honest about it. it it's, 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 it's not putting for the genuine person. The man who goes up and brought his kids up there to, to the Bronx all his life. Mm. I brought my father up there in June. And the place was a shadow of the place. My father, like, there was 50 or 60 people. And we watched four games there. Yeah. And... There was no atmosphere. There was, I mean, it's it's. To you always me, feel here every year when when the New York game. Mike and I've talked about this before. It's like it's the curtain raiser. It's like the the start and the end 
for New York GA. Like the, the big hype about the New York and Mayo this year, which was fabulous. But it's nearly like it starts in the morning and then it ends in the afternoon. And then there's nothing more for the rest of the year, regardless. But you I, know, but I, give it, I, gi- I give you another idea. New York has to play in a Connacht Championship. Why can't New York play in an American Championship? Why yeah. can't New York play? Oh, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Why can't they play Chicago, Boston, Boston, Chicago? Why can't they play? Charlotte, North Carolina I mean, get, get have a massive team now. Get, get all your teams together and play a championship over here. Absolutely. Why Everyone should New York? Why yeah. should New York just get the game every year? And, like let, the, and let the winners then represent. And I think are most you, people you in go New York would agree with it. Like, anyway. are you going to uh, are you going to be able to field teams that are going to come that are going to compete? Who, who's going to who's going to finance it? Who's going to co- who's going to finance the cost of travel? Well, they put it this way, they have no problem financing teams when they have to over here to win the New York Championship. And, yeah. and the question you've got to ask yourself, those same people got behind a proper New York team could finance it. Because the amount of money that is being thrown away and bringing players over from, others, other, from other counties. I mean, some people at the home summer. are waiting for to be knocked over the championship and come over to New York mm-hmm. to pick up 10,000 or 20,000 and these are the crazy figures being thrown around yeah. and they go home then three or four months after then and they, and they fall into whatever championship okay. they've had at home and, and the, the guy on the, on the street here who was up there training in October, November he's just he's, he's, he's left out yeah. and it, the whole system has to change and some people have to come here some people are going to take a year off and they're going to be here and, and whatever's going to happen but the whole the, the whole look of it has to change like and I don't know what's going to come out of it but if they keep on doing what they're going to do there, there'll be no GA in this in this city within 10 years time Gaelic Park uh, Pat it's if you go up there for the summer there's three games there's two games every evening there could be four games on a Saturday four games on a Sunday it's just a fantastic place to go and watch Gaelic games but if you go up there like you said you go up there you'd only get a handful of people up there for someone who's who went up there as a as a young child who's been back and forth for years and you look at the situation up there now where you've got a small covered stand the old clubhouse has been leveled there's no there's plans in place for a clubhouse it was supposed to be this they're supposed to start construction a couple of months ago it's all up in the air for someone who who has lived in new york who, who's in new york or who who's been over and back and you go up now it's 2019 and you were there this summer what kind of what feelings go through run through you and your father well my father he he was he was my father com- came back every year until my mother got sick and he would come home for the for the kind of championship because he would meet more and more of his friends they go for something to eat I mean in fairness age is moving on and some of them have passed but he would meet them they would have talk about old times that's I mean it's it's there's no facilities to look after him there anyway. I remember being in Gilly Park and the, the ballroom used to be full with fellas having their Sunday dinner after playing the match. There was, a, there, was, there was a stand behind the goal that's gone. I mean, they cleared that out. I mean, there was, there was grass on the pitch. I mean, you got a bad summer, then it was like a concrete block. Then they put on the AstroTurf. I don't know, the AstroTurf was positive or negative, I don't know. But, but there, there's nowhere to go to talk to a person yeah. up there and, and the association is more like if, if you go home to Kerry and you go back to South Kerry you go back to West Kerry you go back to different parts of Kerry fellas come home every weekend to play with the club they come down from Dublin they come in from London they come from all over the county all over the country to play they have their paycheck with them they'll play, go figure the match on, on Saturday night go for a couple of points locally at home and they're on the road again Sunday and that's what made the GA great in Kerry anyway it was, it was about the parish and people knowing where we were, everyone's from but here there's the backbone people I know because of people move away to come back to all that but traditionally the people develop and follow a, a club here and they're there for life and they got so many ups and downs in their life like and like John Hayes here and Mike Greer and they are, they've given a lifetime of service to the GA they did for, for, for Kerry in New York I mean I can tell you a story and um, Kerry were playing New York in the National League final and I'm not sure of the year was it 71, 72 that period of time anyway but Declan O'Sullivan's uncles were great friends of my father's John, Pat, Mickey, Joe 
and, and Patsy Brass and they were all above in Gaelic Park and with about 8 or 9 minutes to go in the game Kerry were down 4 points with about 5 or 6 minutes to go in the game Kerry were down a goal the National League final over here next thing Mickey Joe passed out he couldn't take it no more he couldn't take the pressure <laughs> he woke up anyway after but Mick O'Connor was after sticking the ball in the back of the net and the game was a draw but they had to stay again another week to play the National League final again like. but my point I'm trying to say is that that passion was there for the, for the New York team mm. that passion was there for the Kerry team the place was people were falling over each other they couldn't get in there the question is that, that if, you look, if you go to different parts you now you go to Rockland County you go over to the Shining Gales and you go to all the, the, the seven or eight strong clubs here they have people all the time and the GA at home have to come up with some idea how to develop them into, into senior clubs so that you will have eight, eight, eight communities that will have a, a team to follow yeah. and the county names are gone and yeah. whatever way you want to look at it the county names are gone there has to be a meaning for the area they're from and people at home uh, will say Kerry were good to me in New York but how many of them have kids who play with the Kerry underage team here in New York how many they yeah. don't they have their own yeah. they're senior clubs they don't develop the game like the New Hyde Parks and the, and the Shining Gales and St. Barnabas yeah I mean th- and, and, and they're the teams that the GA here in New York have to develop mm. and, and, and that's the plan and they have to become senior teams you've um, you mentioned Rockland County there Patrick you, you've, have you been up to see their clubhouse and their set up up there in Rockland County I was when I was vice chairman I was up there looking at it when I was chairman I was yeah I was up there in June. It's it's fabulous set up. It's amazing what they've done, isn't it? Yes, and uh, and but five, six, ten. There's a community there, oh, totally and they yeah. all. And it, but ten or twelve of them piloted it, but the whole community got behind it. They yeah. work it behind the bar. You go up there, in the Conroy's yeah. and the lads in working behind the bar themselves. It's brilliant the way the lads do. They operate it. But this is what has to happen here. Like your Randall's Island should be your That's your, crow, totally. your crow park here, and oh. there should be ten areas here, and there should be leagues played off all of these different areas, and 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 trying to develop it but look at that's a different talk so yeah. for people who don't know Randall's Island is on the East River Johnny isn't it yeah it's just it's in between it's Queens yeah. and the Bronx and Manhattan it's like it's hard to believe as Patrick says it's just yeah. w- what a location it would have been s- and to see what it is now it's a big soccer setup and there's different stuff out there it's yeah. an amazing setup there's about 90 pitches out there baseball NFL and it's where we I played with Kerry Club this year and it's where we all train and it's they're training on soccer pitches with no GA goals and uh, you co- you come out you're not you, you, as a player you come out and you just want you want to play to the highest standard as, as possible, but when you're kind of it is a bit disheartening that you don't have any place to to, to play or to even to have goals. Uh, but Randall's Island would have been a great great spot to have a, a Gaelic Park because Gaelic Park no at the moment the pitch is owned by Manhattan College. They own the rights to the, the pitch. I don't know, I don't know how they left that goal because the G had a a hundred year lease on that and now and they lost out mm. um, but but you're going on about playing there on goals I remember when I was a young fella and all the teams in the neighbourhood where we were living like the base of, you know the majority of them they trained in Flushing Meadows with with with, with bags as goalposts mm. nothing has changed nothing has changed in, in 40 years like yeah. that's the point I'm saying nothing is and yeah. I'm 52 years of age you're, you're going back you look fabulous with any consolation in fairness Johnny like you look fabulous you can pay for this kind of a body like <laughs> <laughs> Pat getting back to the American sort of um, connection that you and everyone else has um, we have a lot of uh, mutual friends over the years and I'm just always fascinated I get it all the time here in the bar people saying oh how do you raise money here how do you do this as in from other counties that visit and I always go back to the Kerry sort of thing and it's that was the common joke oh sure Kerry come over and get their two and a half million they don't say begrudgingly but it's kind of always said how did they do it well, I've been fortunate enough through you and Kieran and Tomas and that to meet some of these lads and become good friends with them lads up around Westchester and that but it's amazing the connection the likes of Frank Stevenson and people like that have made with a lot of these guys through the golf clubs F- through Tralee and Waterville and stuff like that they, they made some fierce contacts through the people who be golfing in, in Kerry like. mm, yeah but the reason why we made a lot of that money, or the majority of that money, was because of Omar Moriarty. Yeah. Omar Moriarty was on the ground. He was well enough connected. He directed us to the right people. He gave us the right information. He, he told us when to yeah. fall back, 
or go forward. And every everyone else we met that came on board all joined joined in after but one way or two and I owner B the owner of the Sea Lodge in Waterville. Yeah. But, the the yeah. well. but the one thing I would say is that if any counties come over here, unless they have somebody on the ground doing the work for them, you can't do it at home. Yeah. And Omar Yarty got a crew of fellas over here, did the work on the ground for us. So when we came over here, um, like Morris Regan um, was the main man behind the thing, Tony O'Sullivan and Avalis, they were the two big biggest yeah. builders in the city that supported us big time. Like, and but it was like it was Morris kind of pushed the boat out a bit further, and, and that made, made that made it happen. Ray, well, ask Ray, Ray, what, would, what would someone, what, what would you? What would an emo man ask for, uh, no. Dr. Crossman? He's a Douglas man. <laughs> he played with everyone, Passage, Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a bit of a similar to what should be happening here. I played with the parish I lived in, right? So going up in Cork, I lived. Come in there, Ray. Just so my father-in-law, Ray O'Sullivan, is in for the... Hi, everybody, sorry. Probably blocking the camera there. But, uh... Pat, similar to yourself, like, I didn't realise actually Croaks were so young because I played with Passage, uh, started off from the Junior B club, went to senior level in the space of five years, won the Junior Intermediate and got to a semi-final of an 84 county against the Bars. Yeah. And Makila beat the Bars in that county final but went on to win the All-Ireland that year. But I didn't realise now to speak because we played West Kerry and we played Mid Kerry in challenge games. Yeah. And you go back to what you said about Croaks playing the Nemo way. And our mentor was Terry Howard, who was a teacher in Ignite Reach with Billy Morgan. And they won the Corny Mirror and what's the Hartley in the same year. And he brought that same ethos to passage. And people couldn't believe that a junior club with probably 25 players could raise their standards that. Mm. But it's the heart and soul of the community. And as I grew up and had my own family, I had to move into different areas for housing and stuff like that. But living and working and building the teams where you live and talking about the areas here now in New York, I think that's probably where the the thing has to start again. Well, they have, first of all, in a way, they have to get um, they have to get a plan for the city here, and 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 as a general, they ha- if they don't have a long a ten year, fifteen year plan, if they try to do it in one year, it won't happen. And first of all, they have to get their base, and and I, I think somebody has to come out from Crow Park to run it, and I think they have to be big enough to network with all the businesses here. And to and to talk to them about what the plan is, because for the people who have made up their home here, there has to be a place where they can go and mingle and meet. And every if this t- was whatever part of the city it's in, where it's agreeable, and all the workforce of all these people, the, the employees are better, they're better informed, they're better, they have a better atmosphere after work. They've they have more to be involved in that relates to home, and. What's going on at the moment is not acceptable, and if people think it's acceptable here, they're living in a different way of life, because they're living in, in a life that this is mine, and it can't be no one else's. And here, and, and, and this is what the association in Kerry is, the Kerry GA belongs to everyone, and, and is driven by every club that about the importance of Kerry and what it means. The importance of New York has to be driven by New York people, but they need leadership and to be driven in the right direction and there has to be a plan and if that's not put together properly um, the association is never going to um, develop in the city and I'm going back in the Central Council Delegate for Kerry now in, in, in a few weeks time and I don't know what I'm going to be doing or where I'm going to be but my w- with different things that are going to be happening but I really feel strong about the GA in New York and I really feel that the importance of a strong community in New York and that can only develop with the proper leadership and the proper financial um, behind it and if every county has to stay out of here at, at not to come in as a big level and that the GA are driving this I think there's no issue but if the same people are going to keep on asking questions about why nothing is happening the negativity is going to go deeper again and that's what I find and going back about passage <laughs> when when the Crokes won the All Ireland Club in '92, we had 19 fellas tugged off. That's what we had, 19. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's yeah. we've we've grown. The question is, and the big and, and the biggest problem that is facing the likes of the Crokes, the Legion, and Spa, 
the likes of Dingle and the tones is that the planning permission and the tones is, is not there and the amount the amount of players that would be coming through us like we have thirteen and a half thousand people living in Killarney and there's no house being built no semi so for people to get married so they're all going out of the town in ten years time there might be only two teams in Killarney and people might not realize it but there's this thing about the big teams and the big towns will always survive but if they haven't got a population playing and Killarney is the retirement capital of Ireland the age profile of the retirement people sell their houses in Dublin they buy a house half the price in Killarney and might buy an apartment in Spain or have an apartment in Dublin and that's what's happening yeah and and we have to we, we and Kerry have to look at it but if I say that at home people will pull their hair out of their heads and say oh they want enough anyway like but it's but if you haven't got the likes of the Gucci needs for this coming out of the towns I mean like Mikey Shee he came out of Trilly I mean David Clifford's only out the road from Fossil but my point I'm trying to say is that like Mike Frank Russell was from Killarg and there's I mean Paul Ganey from Dingle if they, yeah. if they were not coming true yeah, yeah um, absolutely absolutely yeah it definitely needs a plan and if I remember you were saying to me Michael that the chairman here is running for council this year or something as well How was a, a, a Kerry, what, what's a, his agenda a, 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 a fee, uh, J, John Henchy of Kerry Club is going for is up for um, chairperson next week yeah and she's from Tarbert Tarbert Qu- yeah Dan yeah. Kiley's daughter yeah, yeah. And, um, the politician Dan Kiley, yeah. Well, Joan was born here as well, actually. She was, and she moved back. Yeah. yeah, she moved back, and um, what to put a Larry McCarthy is going for the president. Yeah, and the, look, it, it's not all doom and gloom for New York GA. There's a lot been done in the, the development, which Joan has uh, been at pains to explain to me. But I saw today d- uh, this year at the World Games, there was several teams went back but home for but the World. Games. The one thing I would say in the development of the, probably the game itself has improved with with the GDAs on the ground and for the, the core people but facilities haven't improved mm. and the facilities if you if you, yeah. if you if you figure out who drove Shannon Gales Harry Matters from, from our he was one of the main driving forces of that um, you, you're talking about Sean Price he was another fellow they went out they knocked on doors and they, they got money look at the boys above in Rockland they went out and got money the question is they went out and did their own job they did their own deals with the city they got their own land my point I'm trying to say is that association here have to pinpoint seven or eight different parts in the city. Mineola is another place where that should be in, or there's an Irish centre there where they could develop a piece of ground in the amount of Irish, Irish Americans living there. And they have to cherry pick the areas where they're going okay. and do a deal with the city. And if, if it costs eight million to put the pitches in these places, that's the first plan that they have to put together to pro power and how we're going to fund this and how to get business people behind them in the city mm-hmm. to do that. And that's the biggest thing is that if, I mean, what's going to happen? Joan will do her four or five years as chairperson. If she has no plan to go forward to increase the association, she's going nowhere. And, and what, is the, what are the plans from the association at home to, incre- to develop here? But one thing I see is that the GPA can come over here. They can run the big dinner dances. They can bring over a million, million and a half. They can bring everyone over and have a good time. And, and yet the, the, the grassroots here are suffering. Right. And you can say that the same thing about Kerry coming over. But Kerry came over to carry business people to develop a home where immigration had taken so many people away from us. My point I'm saying is things have moved on and we really haven't come out of this recession. There's no real building going on in Kerry. All the fellas are going up to Cork and different places doing their construction work. But my point I'm trying to say to you is that, that if that money that was raised at the GPA dinner dance was left in the city, and we did seven or eight of them. That's a pitch done for eight or nine of them in over an eight or nine year period of time. And that would benefit this association. And then they develop a major ho- home where they play their finals and have ten or 12,000 people yeah. stadium. And that's it. Yeah. And have your Irish centre and marry every Irish boy and girl over here. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we hope to get Joan on uh, if she does get chair. But one of the things, because she was involved with Kerry and I was involved with Kerry, one of the things she pointed out to me when I spoke to her a couple of weeks ago is that money coming in. She basically said that she would be pushing for some sort of levy on fundraising. If people, if people are coming into New York, taking money out of New York, that she'd slap 5-10% on it. I'm not sure if that would work. Or but I, I'm going to ask you a question. The reason why you're slapping 5 or 10% is because you're not raising no money yourself. 
Yeah. So somebody else can do them, the dog work, and you're going to take it. That's a fair point. So my point I'm saying is that they're, they're in the city every day of the week. Why don't they get yeah. the ten, bi- 10 of the biggest business people in the city together and saying this is our plan? Yeah. They have no plan. They're fighting every day of the week. Every mm-hmm. day of the week, there's a different plan coming up from a different area. And that's why the association at home has to drive this. Because no, they don't know what they want. It changes from chairperson to chairperson. Direction. I mean... Like the question is, why, do, why don't they set up the home over in Queens, where they all have to hop in the car and come down to Queens? Mm. They won't agree on that. So the point I'm trying to say is, like, it's, it's, what do we want? What do we want? The association. She has no grounds. If, if I go to Morris Regan or Donald Sullivan or whoever person, I ask them to do something for the Kerry GA. That's he's quite entitled to do that. How can they take a levy off that? Mm. How can how can they take a levy off the GPA? The GPA saw a weakness in our association where they have developed. And the one thing I'm disappointed, and by saying this now, people will come along and probably have a cut at me. They, when that mental health as, as the biggest thing, the majority of people asking about multi- mental health have never lived in the west of Ireland. They haven't never been exposed to what we've been exposed to. Yet they come up with this word and they generated money off some of the biggest um, people, builders, around. And and because be, and, and, and the GPA became um, was what I'm um, like it's like when Coke Park opened, everybody wanted to be involved in it. The GPA became the next big thing then after because all the players were involved. And I'll be very honest, they do a lot of good work. And Shawnee Walsh will probably kill me. Shawnee Shawnee will tell you, and he'll tell me all the time, is that the education what they're given to fellows who have fallen off the horse, fellows who have fallen off the horse different ways. They've done great work that way. Well, bringing fellas back to education, give grants that way. I mean, but the GA itself should have been doing that for people who have given their lifetime playing into county football or hurling. Mm. I mean, they saw those weaknesses. But the one thing I'm saying is that we have no control where that money goes, and mm. I don't know what's going to come out of it. Pat, in all your years, to bring it back to a lighter note, I was um, I text some of your friends and asked them what questions I should ask you. So, um, quick fire round. They told me to ask <laughs> you. Their exact words were to ask you about some team holiday stories, but they said to leave um, you have to leave a family in the west of uh, Kerry out of any of your stories. I assume that includes Mick Galway as well. So I'm sure you have some good stories that are. We can edit it out anyway, but no, I that's not I'd telling us. <laughs> so I'm being honest when I'm saying about my own thoughts and my own beliefs and association. Yeah. And other people will probably come back and say I'm totally wrong, which they're yeah. quite entitled. And. But I think you've a better insight than most, and I'm not just saying that you grew up here, you lived here, you've seen your dad's insight to it here, seen how big the GEA was in New York and where it had the potential of going, and to see where it is now we went on is pretty disappointing. A couple of my buddies are downstairs, and we went down the 21 championship here in New York, in New Hyde Park. I mean, it was Dick No Sullivan's um, first cousin, Mike Sullivan, was playing. The Shelvies were phenomenal. There was, there was three Shelvies playing. There was... Um, Tommy played with Kevin. He was flown home from here. Like he was the top um, scorer in in, 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 in Leinster um, College's football. You had Kevin Shelby, Whitey Shelby. You had Martin O'Brien from Belong for Kevin O'Connell. You had the PJ Doherty's. We had, we had all the guys. They all had to be American citizens, and they all played, and we had great fun. Yeah, Excuse but me. but you your your is what Johnny was getting to is like. You've an opinion that's backed up through experience. You've served on the c- c- as chair at the Kerry County Board. You've done tremendous work with Dr. Crokes. You've lived here. You've been over and back. You know, there's probably the, one of the most qualified people to, to comment on it in a way. So if people are always going to have, have different, different, different opinions. So... I think it's quite insightful, and it's quite you know it's it's, it's basically you're you're laying it out the way it, it the way it is really. <sighs> and it was a good way you're changing the subject about the team holiday stories. Well, the team holidays anyway you should stay on holiday. I agree. <laughs> that was a test. I wanted to make sure you wouldn't and tell me. But the one thing I say in a way is that um, I remember um, I won't say what players are wearing anyway, but um, Pat Spillane was coming out with his book and was, and was shooting from the hip. It was the name of the book. And it was the first book that was done of that great Kerry team. And I think the boys were having a couple of pints one night. And I don't know, was it in Tralee or in Dublin or in Killarney? And before it came out, they said, they didn't give a damn what was written. 
in the book long nothing was written about the trips <laughs> <laughs> that has stuck for tradition we carry by reading some of the recent yeah. books of lads <laughs> I know but I'll be honest it's, look you go away you enjoy yourself I mean it's, it's, it's like we come out here every year like a gang of us we came over fundraising we continue to come over mm. same time of year ourselves then like um, we enjoy coming over I'm over three or four times a year myself and um, I, ju- I just find it's, 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 it's great and I enjoy meeting everybody when I come back um, but I, f- I find it um, frustrating to see nothing has progressed mm. from my time as an eight year old here it's actually gone backwards and people have come and gone and people have um, made every kind of an excuse and they made the excuse at home and I remember I went to different people at the time and there were, there were different um, things that were coming up all the time and I suppose every county has to be developed but my point I'm trying to say is that with, with a small bit of, of direction a small bit of financial help and, and with the know-how what they have because you don't develop something like Crow Park or Park Kiev or what's going to happen above in Belfast without having the know-how and and yeah but how how is like you're saying the J have to do a lot but how is that drive that motivation going to come from from back home to develop uh, a county that's a seven hour flight away well they're a full voting county they play in the, in the championship they have probably um, in probably one of the biggest financial hubs in the world and everybody else has benefited out of it except for the association I mean like I'd be very honest about it like I I mean Larry was with the side that has pushed for Gaelic Park um, Lawrence McGrath was pushing for Gaelic Park Joan Hinchy was pushing for Gaelic Park mm. Ian Conray and a group of different people were pushing for Top of the Hill um, I asked different people within the building crowd here um, would they support any of the two of them and they said it wouldn't because uh, there's no sound structure with it yeah. um, even though Ian Conroy's one was another Rockland County which made a lot of sense Yeah. Um, the boys made a, a bit of sense too that, that they couldn't develop anything without having a cash income which the, the bar and the restaurant would have brought them but the, the question about that bar and restaurant is that when they were planning to do it they, they forgot to check the foundation like, which is the problem now why I can't move on and the figures have changed now since like so yeah, they've downgraded the the plan I was saying a couple of weeks ago there that they had I think they have they're after downgrading it several times have they that the the foundation they have to go down further with the foundation and they're going to make it a bit smaller than what was originally planned and I think I correct me if I'm wrong Pat, I think they only have a 10 year lease a rotating 10 year lease on the actual ground where the clubhouse is I don't really know that yeah. I, I think it is something I like th- I think th- between they ha- Fordham and the MTA or something like they that. have the lease on the, the, the land where the, the clubhouse is the pitch has gone to Manhattan with the GA had that for years they had, and it, they had it for, for a lifetime and they were sleeping to let to leave a go because they were supposed to move upstate and the boys Manhattan College came in back door and slipped them. Yeah. So So you've a lease in a place that generally if administration changes within Manhattan College, somebody can just walk in realistically, no different than me in this bar, and he can change his mind. So your leases could just end straight away. So you're gonna put all this money into a clubhouse, into a thing that could be gone. If a certain yeah. person I says you're gone. I suppose Manhattan College would keep on turning over mm. sports teams in a way up there anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, just uh, uh, as a general GA question, uh, Pat, do you think a three-year term for chairman is too short to implement long-term planning? It carries five, Cork is three, yeah. and they can go to a five. I say, I say it's five years here in New York. I think Lawrence has done, it's his third, is it like, I could be wrong. No, I think I Lawrence, talk, Lawrence, talk was three. Lawrence was chairman when I, when I came out as chairman. Okay. So Lawrence is five years. Okay. Cork is only three years. I think Cork should be up to five years anyway. Wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks a million, Pat. Thanks very much, Thank you. And that's all for this week's podcast. Keep an eye out for our episode with five time All Ireland football winner with Dublin, Jack McCaffrey, where we take a look back on Dublin's historic five in a row in 2019, potential rule changes, and Jack's thoughts on his goals for the future. Keep up to date with all of our latest episodes by subscribing to the podcast, and we appreciate all feedback. 
so please give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. The house, the drinks were passed around. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round and round to me away. You sent the boy there at me. Oh, you New York girls, can you dance?